just come into dinner, Mr. Peabody. The Petersons. She hates me. Make it work. But don't tell her about the way back. He calls it the way back. It's a time machine. <sighs> Sherman, Penny, why are you two dressed like ancient Greeks? I lost her in ancient Egypt. And I got engaged to King Tut. Then we ran out of gas. In ancient Troy. You used the way back. Yeah, she was into it. Oh my. Hello, everyone. Got a quick little vlog here for you about the movie Mr. Peabody and Sherman, a movie that I almost didn't see last weekend because for some bizarre reason, for the second time in a row that I've gone to the movies, the theater I went to had projector problems that almost stopped me from seeing the movie. And it's weird. Completely different theaters, two completely different theaters, two different movies. And yet the first one, the projector cut out about 20 minutes into the movie. They were able to fix it. Everything went okay. But, and this time the projector actually just froze before the movie even started. Like, it pops up the screen, says, our feature presentation is about to begin. And it stayed there. And everyone at the end just like, um, this is supposed to happen? I mean, they, they were able to get it fixed, although I saw something rather peculiar. I guess they you know, went up and it's a digital projector, so it's running some kind of software program, I'm sure, and they had to just restart it. But as they were messing with it, the uh, the image that said, our feature presentation is about to begin, whatever, disappeared for a minute. And honest to God, I saw a Windows taskbar on the bottom of the screen. And, and it looked like this fucking projector was running XP. Or maybe it, it, it's possibly it could have been a newer version of Windows just with a classic shell on it, but I wouldn't have expected a fucking movie projector to be running Windows. That just seems incredibly bizarre. I don't know. Century Theaters, what are you doing? I, but, but anyway, they fixed the problem, whatever, but it seems kind of weird that this has happened twice in a row for me. If this happens a third time, then... Clearly, I need to see some kind of a fortune teller or, or an exorcist or something and get this curse lifted because there's something wrong with me. But uh, anyway, I saw Mr. Peabody and Sherman, um, a movie that I was cautiously looking forward to because I had a sneaky suspicion that they were going to find yet another way to rape my childhood because I grew up on the uh, on Peabody's Improbable History cartoons and... You know, really liked them as a kid, so I was kind of nervous that they were just going to butcher it, but thankfully, that didn't happen. This was not only a pretty good movie, but actually a pretty faithful adaptation. Uh, I think, for the most part, they really got the characters of Mr. Peabody and Sherman right, and did a good job of, you know, for one thing, kind of bringing the characters into the modern day, and also making a good transition from a bunch of five-minute cartoons to a 90-minute film, which is clearly much more complicated than it looks, if history is any indication, but DreamWorks pulled it off, so well done, DreamWorks. You did good. Uh, but yeah, the character of Mr. Peabody, who was played by Ty Burrell in this movie, who did a really good job, and I think they more or less nailed the character, um, I think they toned down his uh, narcissism just a little bit and also his disdain for lesser intelligence that he sometimes exhibited in the cartoons. Like, I can remember one moment. I was actually uh, watching a few of the old cartoons on YouTube just to prepare for the movie, and there was one I came across where uh, somehow Peabody and Sherman ended up in a jail cell, and then at some point a note comes flying through the bars and lands in their cell, and Sherman says, Look, Mr. Peabody, a rock with a note attached to it! And Peabody just gives Sherman this look, like, Yes, very good. Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> and the voiceover says, Resisting the urge to throttle Sherman, I read the note. <laughs> but yeah, he, he was a 
bit nicer in this movie. They toned down his, uh, his asshole side a little bit, but, but still, more or less, they got the character right. And, and of course, if you recall, pretty much every Peabody cartoon ended with some kind of a pun. Oh, there are puns in this movie. There are so many puns. They were awful. I loved it. <laughs> oh, very well done. Uh, but yeah, the story uh, is basically uh, Peabody adopts uh, Sherman as a baby, unlike, I think in the cartoon, he was already about a six or seven year old boy when he adopted him, but they, they changed it up a little bit, but still more or less the same story. And at some point, uh, at Sherman's first day of school, he runs into a, a bully, and this they get into some kind of a fight, and Peabody tries to resolve this by inviting the bully and her family over to dinner. And, of course, Peabody tells him, don't show her the way back. And, of course, he shows her the way back, and they go back in time and cause all sorts of trouble, and they have to sort it out. And off they go. And that's pretty much the setup. And from there, they go to several different time periods, each, each with its own pun, <laughs> of course. And yeah, yeah, this story was, but without getting into too much more, because I don't really want to spoil anything, but the story was pretty strong for the most part. Uh, the jokes hit more often than they missed. Um, really, there was only one joke I didn't care for, and there was a point where the... Uh, where the, uh, the Greek soldier Agamemnon says, don't tase me, bro. I think that was actually in one of the trailers. I just really, that joke is kind of old at this point. I, I wasn't digging that, but that, that's really the only big complaint I have. For the most part, the comedy worked pretty well. Uh, as far as the cast, uh, I mentioned Ty Burrell during Mr. Peabody. I thought he did a fine job. Uh, Max Charles as the voice of Sherman also did well. Uh, Stephen Colbert is in this movie as the, the bully's father, if I remember correctly, and he's as good as he always is. Uh, Agamemnon is played by Patrick Warburton, and pretty much exactly what you'd expect from Patrick, Patrick Warburton. He's He's Patrick Warburton, <laughs> you know, for better or worse, that's what he is. And, but yeah, he, he was fine. And there was also, I didn't realize this until I saw his name in the credits, but Mel Brooks has a cameo in this as Albert Einstein. That's kind of awesome. Anytime you can get Mel Brooks, it's awesome. Uh, the animation is beautiful in this movie. It's pretty much what you'd expect from DreamWorks. Nothing breaking any new ground, but... You know what? At the level they're at, they really don't have to. They can just keep doing their thing, and they're doing fine. Uh, I did see this in 3D. I don't think there's really a need to see it in 3D, now that I've seen it. Uh, I mean, the 3D is more than adequate. It works fine, and I mean, for computer-animated movies, it usually is fine. But really, that's all I can say about it. It's fine. It's okay. It works. It's functional. It's not blowing me away by any stretch. And honestly, if you see it, and I think you should, uh, you can just stick with the 2D ticket price. But as a 2D film, I definitely think it's worth paying full price for this. If you have kids, I am sure they will eat it up. If you're an adult who grew up on the cartoons like I did, I'm sure you'll like it as well. And yep, that's pretty much all I got to say about Peabody and Sherman. Now, before I sign off, Couple more things I want to talk about just real quick. Uh, before I saw the movie, I saw a trailer for the Annie remake, which is another movie that where they're taking an old story and bringing it into the present day. And I am okay with this. And actually, as I was watching the trailer, I'm thinking, you know, the direction they're going with this, this could actually work. This. You know, this has potential. They got a pretty strong cast in here. The story looks solid from what I can tell. I think this can work. But then... The little girl who's playing Annie in this movie, whose name escapes me, it's the, the girl from Beasts of the Southern Wild. Uh, fuck, what was her name? Uh, I'll stick it down here. At some point, she starts singing 
Tomorrow. Classic song from the musical. And it's auto-tuned. You want to bring it into the present day? Okay. But you're taking a song from a Broadway musical and you're auto-tuning it? No. No. I hope this was just for the trailer and that's not actually how it's going to go down in the movie, but if this is really what it's like in the movie, bad Sony Pictures. Bad. Go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. And fix this before the movie releases. And one more thing real quick before I sign off here. Uh, I need a little something from you guys. So whenever you post your comments, in addition to whatever comments or questions or whatever you want to put here, um, I would also like you, if you are up for it, to post any or all of the following. A singular noun, a plural noun, an adjective, an adverb, a singular body part, and a plural body part. I'm sure you can guess where I'm going with this. Yeah, we're, we're going to do a little experiment here. I'm curious how this is going to turn out, but uh, yeah, if, if you feel up to posting any of those, feel free, and we'll see what happens. Till next time. Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Step away from the futuristic orb. I take orders from no man. Ooh la la! <laughs> take it easy, bro. In real D and digital 3D.